Did we land on the moon? Is the moon made of cheese? Is it a projection? Are we in a simulation? Hey everybody, I'm Zach with Minis. Real quickly before we get started on today's tutorial, I have one simple request. If you're not subscribed to this channel, please hit that subscribe button. Hit that little bell for notifications of every time I upload a video. It helps little channels like mine extraordinarily. And the second thing, to just like this video. I know that it probably sucks. Yeah, well, you know, that's just like uh, your opinion, man. I know that it probably doesn't even look like the moon. God damn it, I'm trying. And isn't that enough? Alright, real quick, we're going to run through the material list for this. First, uh, most importantly, uh, Vallejo Earth Texture Paste. Um, I like Black Lava Asphalt for this. Um, I find the texture to be very well um, and uh, very moony-like. Um, also, we're just going to need some tools for creating craters. Um, just varying size brushes. Uh, we're going to be using the back sides, obviously. Um, one thing, a little trick I found out, uh, chapstick. Uh, so we'll be using this to uh, apply to the tips of the brushes uh, to just kind of create that little barrier so that the paste, when uh, it is almost dried, does not stick to the utensils and mess up our craters. And lastly, we'll need some bases, and then uh, we'll need some paints eventually, but we will dive into that soon. among you might have noticed that there was actually no miniature on these bases. That was by design. I made this simple illustration to kind of prove my point. Notice the happy face. When the happy face is making his moon bases, he has nothing in his way to obstruct him from making craters, which is important when making a moon base. The second image is of a, someone who has a miniature on their base already, and as you can see, that's destined to cause problems. Now, this does not make it impossible to do. I'm just merely stating that I feel it's a lot easier of a task when you don't have a miniature on your base. Miniatures can be removed from bases if necessary. Um, you can use a knife, you can stick them in the freezer, um, you can, you know, maybe slowly kind of bend them a little bit. It's up to you. Um, but, ultimately, I find it easier to do this, this task with uh, no miniature in my way. But, with that being said, back to the video. I've given them about 15 minutes to dry in front of a fan. Um, obviously, it's up to you, kind of how much you want it to cure. But, now we are going to take our lovely little stick of chapstick should have done this without a gloved finger but oh well so I'm just going to kind of coat that on there some now pretty much just straight down and we're just looking to make some impressions kind of go where you've you know, already established a large amount of it so that it kind of has enough uh, material there to form a shape like a crater. And then we're just going to kind of make small little dents like this. And I made here. All right, we are back, and we have uh, given these a little bit more time to properly cure, and uh, they're looking like they're ready to hit the paint shop, so I think that's what we're going to do. So Now, I'm going to use an airbrush. Um, I don't expect you to, you know, go out and buy an airbrush just to do this. Yeah, this very easily could be achieved with a dry brush. Um, I actually think I might set one of these aside and just do a dry brush, so, just so you can kind of see side-by-side -side comparisons. Um, but I have four here just so that maybe we can try a couple different colors, see kind of what we come up with. But we'll uh, hop over to the paint booth quick and uh, throw some paint and we'll see kind of what we come up with.
All right. After airbrushing those first bit three bases, the dude is nothing but a man of his word. So we are going to do one by brush, the old-fashioned way. So I have a uh, pearl acrylic khaki here, um, loaded up on just my little dry palette. Um, regular brush, not paint loaded all the way up through. I've obviously wiped most of my excess off on my paper towel. So now this being about directionality, so you want to kind of start where your light's going to start and then just kind of flick the way you want to go. And now the thing is with this is just like what I've been doing with the airbrush, you're going one direction, okay, you have a hot spot of the light from, you know, presumably the sun or, you know, whatever, the a planet to which this moon orbits. But so yeah, load up our brush a little bit, like so, you know, third of the way up the up the bristles. We dab our excess, get our brush nice and empty of paint. Okay, so you see I test on my glove here. Still quite a bit of paint there. Get a little bit more off. Test again. Close. A little bit more. Alright, and that's better. All right. So again, just directionality. That that hot spot, and just sweep that one direction. Don't be, don't rotate the base a whole lot, if at all. Just focus on going that way. And now. All right, now after I've allowed these some time to dry, um, these uh, are what our finished bases look like. Um, I'm pretty happy with them. Um, the red one was kind of a goofy one, just kind of wanted to see how it would look. Um, <laughs> kind of looks pretty crappy, if I'm honest. Um, nothing that you couldn't uh, kind of flesh out or add to, but you know whether if it's, you know, got a red glow from, you know, uh, the other planet that it's orbiting or the sun that uh, is in the system that it is orbiting. Uh, I thought it would just, you know present a unique opportunity to give it a try um here these two i personally are my favorite uh the dry brushing one here too um obviously uh if you do not have an airbrush this is kind of one of the closer representations of what you uh could hope to accomplish with this uh tutorial um but the two i like the most are uh the base of gray and then uh, applying the khaki directional and then the uh bright warm gray directional now, another kind of important thing I'd like to note on these is I feel like a really important thing when it comes to moon bases is that you kind of orientate the base in a way that gives you that two-tone, especially if you kind of went the speed route like I did here and didn't, you know, kind of apply any wash or, you know, try to reestablish those uh, recesses or anything like that. Um, I, you know... I like speed methods. Um, you can always give that another try. I, I really just kind of like the way that this looks as it is, um, and also too with this with the warm gray. Um, just kind of a really good, you know, kind of ashy, almost, you know, just barren, kind of dusty look. And getting your model kind of oriented to where the, it catches both kind of lights, you know, so you're not catching the direct back and you're not catching the direct front of the of the sources of either you know the lit or the unlit areas i feel like that directionality really kind of helps sell because we've only ever seen the moon from images of space i mean unless you're you know fortunate enough to have been one of the few souls that have been on the moon but i highly doubt that you're watching my video and trying to understand how the moon is textured uh i'm sure you have plenty more insight than me um, but yeah, you know, a little bit, kind of a cartoony style, but also just, you know, very poppy, very bright, and very simple. You know, that was kind of the whole point, was just that they were very quick. Um, I mean, realistically, you could, you could probably whip up ten of these in the amount of time it took you to watch this video. Um, especially with an airbrush. Um, you have a significant advantage in that regard. Alright, and here we have our five finished bases. Now, I know what you're thinking, there was only four bases in this tutorial, but I wanted to include the original, that kind of inspired the whole uh, process itself, and uh, then I figured I'd run you through the color choice that I went through with that to maybe hopefully give you a little bit better idea what to use for yours. 
Now, my scheme is primarily, as you can see, kind of a bone ivory color and an orange. Now, the best kind of contrasting color to orange is blue, and I went with a really, really dark blue base for the texture of the actual moon, and then I used a gray as a directional color um, with the airbrush. Um, as you can see, I didn't exactly orient it the best in the sense of kind of giving it both, you know, depths of color um, from its original kind of just face-on pose, but that's completely fine. Um, I don't think it takes away or adds anything to it, really. Um, but yeah, just kind of a side-by-side -side comparison here. Um, kind of trying to manipulate the light a little bit just because with having rotating uh, brighter colors uh, with my current camera setup it's a little bit tricky to kind of get the actual feel of what these look like in real life but hopefully you know you can uh, I'm kind of playing with the light here hopefully you can kind of get an idea of what these look like um, and like I said too originally the whole kind of idea behind these was that you know this was going to be a quick um, green stuff free um, you know kind of minimal tool minimal investment uh, basing scheme that you know could kind of get you a uh, cratered moon surface without you know having to green stuff a million little dots on you know 50 or 60 bases and uh, you know maybe crack at them and get them done in a little afternoon but with that being said I uh, appreciate you watching so far and uh, especially if you made it all the way to the end um, please like and subscribe uh, to uh, my channel and to this video uh, it would be extraordinarily helpful to a small channel like me um, but yeah Enjoy your rest of your day and deuces.